Apple launched Vision Pro and changed everything. Augmented reality is a $34 billion market and is expected to reach $115 billion market size by 2027. AR is one of the hottest spaces out there and the average salary of an AR developer is over 19 lakh rupees per year in India. And that begs the question, how do you become an AR developer? With me today, I have Pranav Saxena who has worked at Apple and is currently working as a senior staff engineer at Meta, which means he has years of experience in the field of AR and VR. This video is brought to you by Cryo and now let's hear it from Pranav. Hi everyone, today we have Pranav with us. He is a fellow Bitsian and he has also worked at Apple for the Apple Vision Pro that you've recently seen in the WWDC. Pranav, thank you for joining me here and how are you doing there? Hey Sean, thanks for having me. It's great to be back. And I'm so excited to be here again. And first of all, kudos to you for all the success and hard work you've put into. Absolutely. We are living in some very exciting times right now. Google has been trying to you win this space with Google Glass, did not work out. Microsoft launched its own hub project, did not succeed as much as they wanted it to. But finally, we are having this moment with us with Apple Vision Pro and of course Meta Quest 3 as well. But people want, want to understand this thing that why mixed reality and like what is the importance of this topic that we're talking about and why now exactly right so what is the scope of this field that we are getting into right now? Yeah so if you really look at the history like computer vision or graphics has been a thing since 90s and the first ever like prototype with like pass-throughs and 3D immersive demos were built like back in the 90s. So it's not a new thing, but just that the hardware wasn't there to power such a such compute computationally expensive algorithms on device. Like mo uh, most of this processing happens on device. So whether it's pertaining to rendering for these high fidelity experiences you see, or it's running ML algorithms to do like hand tracking or like voice recognition and things like that. So I think it's the advent of the hardware which has brought the software stack to be able to run in such a sort of a mini form factor or a compact form factor. Other thing is of course the weight. You cannot expect a human to put in a lot of weight on their headsets and that's why you see the battery sort of like, you know, being pulled out of the device and it's attached and is uh, put into your pockets. Again, those are like right. all design considerations. But again, I think going back to your question about mixed reality. So again, it's not a new thing, but I think the right time has come today because the advancement in the hardware has brought us to that sort of podium that we can package this much amount of compute onto a device and power these experiences without having to rely on sort of like external devices like maybe you are tethering to another like external CPU or GPU or things like that. So you don't need to do that. Yes, there would be some aspect of cloud which may come in because cloud computing is not going anywhere and I do expect like some sort of a XR or AR VR cloud to come in at some point where you might see like your headsets interacting with cloud powered experiences like just like Google had Stadia. So yes, there is going to be that. As you all know, software development is a fast growing space with global skill shortage. And you can take advantage of this growing demand by learning the right skills. Yes, it is now possible with Cryo.do. Cryo is the world's first experiential learning platform for aspiring developers, where it helps you with the learn by doing approach. You get to develop practical skills with a project based curriculum focused on real life tech scenarios. With Cryo, you master full stack or backend skills in an actual developer environment where you learn to build platforms like Netflix, Swiggy, Amazon and many more. To increase your credibility, Cryo also helps you create a verified GitHub account. And besides that, Cryo has transformed a thousand careers already. Cryo graduates have been successfully placed in over 700 plus companies including unicorns like Cred and Urban Company and MNCs including Walmart, Microsoft, IBM and many more. So don't wait, join the Cryo's fellowship program and boost your software development career to new heights. Click the link in the description and start your free trial right now. And now let's get back to Pranav. Going back to the, the aspect of like why some of these devices failed in the past, I think for example Google, I feel personally that that was just way too early in the market. People were not ready to right. adopt that sort of a technology in their hands. Plus the form factor like you know with Google Glass, even though the product from a research standpoint was amazing, but for example, expecting people to buy like a thousand dollar Google Glass back in 2012, 2013 timeframe is, I think it's just way too expensive. And like, you can't expect the user to like see at like a diagonal sort of angle or field of view. I think it's not as appealing as or natural for a user to like wear that all day long. I think what you want is 
a very natural like air glass form factor, lightweight, which you can wear all day, just like you and me are wearing our glasses. But imagine that it can also do some like cool AR stuff. So that will be that is the future which right. I expect like the form factors to be sort of evolved in the near future. Absolutely. So you know we've seen the AI wave come and create multiple opportunities for people. What about AR and VR? Like what opportunities does this create? for people who are developers, for designers, for marketers, and how can they take advantage of these opportunities? Now that Apple is getting into this field, I hope that a lot of more companies will be getting into mixed reality as well. So how can they take advantage of this opportunity? Yeah, I think this is a great question. So I usually like, you know, when somebody asks me a question like that, I give them a one-to-one -one map of think about the app ecosystem, which was created for mobile. You know, 10 years ago, we had like 2007 when iPhone was launched, we had this App Store announcement. Now think of that, that we, that moment has come today again, but it's now in the next step of bringing this whole paradigm of spatial computing, 3D immersive AR or VR apps. I think this is again, the creating the opportunity of developers trying to understand like, hey, we need to create immersive content, which is, whether it's AR or VR or even MR, but people will try to like, learn these new frameworks, which Apple has set the ground truth for understanding reality kits and like understanding the rendering engines, Unity and things like that, creating all, all sorts of opportunities to build like 3D immersive content with maybe like, you know, softwares like Maya and maybe some Adobe softwares and things like that, and then be able to programmatically tune them and having some like, you know, softwares to be able to load them in, in real time and things like that. So not to forget like the strength of GPT, like, you know, making a 3D avatar or something like that speak something which maybe gpt is generating as a content in the back in the back end so there's like a lot of funky things you could do and i believe like these are all different sort of opportunities which can be taken as a platform in this time and i, I think it's again a one-to-one -one map of what we had back in 2007 2008 time frame for 2d ecosystem now it's the time for 3d ecosystem mm -hmm. given that the hardware is getting ready we'll have a lot of like content available in the market. We already see like with Quest having 3D games which are being running in uh, on the device with, I don't know, this famous ones like Beat Sabers and Lone Echo and things like that. And I'm sure with more of these devices getting announced and reaching the consumers, we'll have more of these 3D games. And not just that, I think it's also like you can do your office work, like, you know, with different apps which are going to be fine-tuned for immersive experiences. You can have collaborative meetings Think like Zoom available for 3D. Like as we are chatting right now on our yeah. laptops, think like this immersive version of Zoom, which allows your avatar to be sort of physically present with us, with me right in my room while you're wearing your headset or even like, you know, uh, MR glasses for, for that matter, where as the hardware form factor evolves. So people need to go build the right software stacks for it. The OS will be optimized. The hardware will be optimized. The network itself, like, you know, all of this data, let's say, you and me are sitting in different continents and the data is being sent over the wire. So how fast will the data be sent? Like today we have 5G network. Tomorrow we'll have 6G and, and beyond that. So we'll be able to send like right. faster data. Now there's also this big shift from 2D data to 3D data. So there are codecs being developed for that. We're talking about like mm. volumetric rendering, which is going to be like 3D immersive rendering for like an, any object, which you should be able to scan with your like mobile device or even your headset. You may have seen something like this digital persona, which Apple announced, where you're taking a 3D scan of your face and it actually generates mm -hmm. that using ML, right. using ML algorithms. Now, I mean, it is a great starting point, but expect like more sort of advanced ML algorithms, which can generate real time representation of you and teleport that representation to, let's say, another space or another, or another place and reconstruct that in real time. How cool would that be? Imagine you sitting in New Delhi, teleported to the US and you are like right in front of my eyes and I, I can just talk to you as if you're sitting on the same couch with me. Now that is, that is the future which we envision like with technologies being built in the space and there is like a huge opportunity for building apps around it. Like, you know, remote video call, what that means for 3D. Right now we are all doing that for 2D. Similarly, like file sharing, I'm wanting to like, let's say have a collaborative ses session with you I want to do a whiteboard session with you like but now if your avatar was right there I can just physically like host like a whiteboard panel in my physical space and collaborate with you 
how sort of like experience that would be compared to what we do today on our laptop screen where I'm sharing my screen and doing something and then, it, then you're able to like collaborate with me like on Google Docs or something like that. So doing all of that in 3D is just like another level of like, you know, fiction which we have probably seen in some of these sci-fi movies. So I expect like all of that to become reality with all of this AR, VR and MR ecosystem coming to reality. Very interesting. So you mentioned about a lot of tools, right? Let's go into specifics. For anyone who wants to get started with AR as a developer, what skills and tools and mindset would be needed for them to get started and find uh, opportunities like a freelance work or maybe even a job in a company? What steps would they need to go through if we have to pinpoint five or 10 of them? Yeah. I think, again, really great question. There are a couple of things or aspects to this. One is that, do you want to be a third party creator of AR or VR ecosystem? If yes, then let's say, for example, Spark AR, which I think I have previously spoken to you about is a great platform to get started and just create like AR content, which can be also sort of deployed on Instagram and Facebook and Messenger. And people are already doing that. Like, you know, people creating filters, they're getting used and getting like million impressions in a few weeks time frame and people have been doing all sorts of like funky filters and being used in various like occasions. So so I think that's like a great platform which is already there for like a couple of years and, and has like more than, I don't know, 10 million or 20 million 3P creators out there. So that's a great way. The skills required for that is like you should be able to understand some of the basic principles of creating 3D content and be able to programmatically tune that using like some sort of programming language. Let's say it could be JavaScript or C Sharp, or if you want to go further deeper into graphics and rendering stack, then maybe C, C++. Understanding some 3D rendering engines like Unity or Unreal, or even like Spark, which is there in Instagram and Facebook, which renders your uh, stickers, I think is a great ecosystem to sort of be familiar with. And a lot of like documentation mm -hmm. is out there. I had made a small video for this like stuff, which I'm, I'm happy to share again, which can give people some idea of creating like Spark content. I think other than that reality kit, like, you know, which Apple just announced. So if you want to like develop MR apps for Apple's ecosystem, getting some hands-on experience with building some small apps and to going into some more complexities can be like a good trajectory for somebody really wanting to like get deeper skills into this area for MR. I think there were tools like Maya and Autodesk and Photoshop, which allows you to like create now 3D content as well. So you can use that to create content, but then you have to basically be able to render them for MR to become a reality. So I think you have to somehow learn to bridge where you are creating content and how you are actually rendering that. And rendering is where the key thing lies because without rendering, none of the MR or AR operations are going to be success. So connecting them mm -hmm. to like Unity or like some sort of a platform which renders it, which is now provided by Apple, with, by Meta and a couple of, couple of other companies as well. I think that is a good starting point as well. Very cool. So last question to you, and that is, you're working in Meta right now. What are you most excited about in the future for like the next five years in tech? I think personally, one word I'm really excited about the day when AR glasses are going to be launched. The reason I say so is like, you know, headsets are devices which I can wear in my home. I don't think I can wear them while walking outside. I think these are too clumsy that way. I think I want a device which is like maybe a replacement of my phone that if I'm getting message, I should be able to just see a pop up in my field of view when wearing like lightweight glasses. That is where I see like the biggest revolution in the industry in terms of like spatial computing. And I'm sure Meta, Apple, other players are going to work towards that. The use cases may be different, the vision may be different, but we need a product of that form factor, that lightweight form factor, which can do like, or which can run such kind of like use cases either on device or off the device, but allowing me to wear something like normal glasses, just like, you know, we are wearing today. Uh, having a transition into that is, is what I expect in the next five years to come. Again, there are a lot of challenges related to power and thermal dissipation and getting that compute to be packaged into such a tiny form factor. Like, you know, think about you mm -hmm. just have like your glasses and nothing else. Where do you put the battery? Where do you put the chips? Where do you put the transistors? Right. Like, how, how do you do all of this? Like, so something has to be built to enable such kind of like uh, experiences. So I think that is where I am super excited about. I think your question was about next five years. So this is the, the crisp answer to that. Overall, I think I'm particularly excited about like, you know, the AR, VR and MR space. I feel this is the next sort of transition from 2D into 3D and 
it will deeply affect the economy of across the world i feel like it will allow people to create content to build apps to host webinars to do anything which you can imagine in 2d space i think the world is going to transition into 3d and this is like basically what we call as embodied internet that you are actually present right. in this kind of an experience just that it may be your avatars whether it's like more of a cartoonish version or a realistic version we'll see as the technology mm-hmm. evolves i think you already saw one example of that which apple just mentioned about digital personas but we'll also have like more high fidelity avatars which can actually mimic you in real time and actually mm-hmm. also mimic the look which you have in real time like if you grow your hair or you have a beard or you change your hairstyle or whatever you're wearing like different kind of clothes you will actually get that feel versus like taking like a one time scan which gets available as of today so so i am right. excited right. about those technologies too like how ai is going to like power all of this for mr and vr use cases i think i do see like ai and mixed reality sort of coming hand in hand to create like experiences there is a lot of fuzz about generative ai coming in so be able to generate content for mr like how cool would that mm-hmm. be creating different worlds right. in mr like you talk to a voice assistant or gpt based service that hey create like maybe a lake behind the scene which is having like some boats floating around and things like that and then you're able to do mm-hmm. something with that and this is just like out of the box i mean idea is that it will have some concrete use case which adds to human values and human productivity so so that is the kind of world i think i imagine with ai and mr sort of coming together and sort of enabling each other to take the technology forward wonderful i am very excited about this field as well pranav thank you so much for coming here and sharing your perspective and thoughts on how can people take this opportunity of ar and vr and i hope that this thing actually grows and becomes a huge industry and i wish you all the best and that was a video if you're still watching write in the comment section i was till the very end thank you so much for watching i hope you got to learn something from this put it up on social and tag me at ishan sharma 790 you can also check out cryo's link in the description to boost your software development career to new heights that's all from me today i will catch you in the next one bye bye